<laughs> All right. So we're going to talk a little bit now about the question, how do we prioritise the use of our time? Mm. So that's you and I, how we decide how we're going to spend our time every day, every week. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. And maybe the first thing we need to do is start with this concept that um, obviously when somebody emails an uh, email in, which is the way most people communicate with us, because most people come from around the world, so they're emailing in communications to us, they don't realise how much of our time emails take to even respond to. Yeah. So for example, the average, if we think about the average question that a person has, if, if it's a sincere question and, it, and it's about their emotions or their state or what's going on for them personally or even just a sincere question about you know, how the universe operates and all these other questions, there's obviously a lot of facets in the answer of every question. The problem with email is that we've now got to type many, many hours of typing in order to answer their question thoroughly. Yeah. And, and honestly, if, if you think about it, if we, if we only have 20 questions come in a week and I answer every question, so if I personally have 20 questions come in a week and I only answer one question um, at a time, and I'm answering three or four hours at a time because that's how long it takes to type up a yeah. fully fledged response, which might be five to 10 to 15 pages of text. And then you multiply that by 20 times. There's 80 hours a week already yeah. and 80 hours a week. And all you've done is respond to an individual person's questions one at a time. And that's obviously not an effective use of our time. No, and that's part of why we have implemented lots of the things like we're doing right now to yes. try and give people access to a lot of inf a lot of people access to valuable information yes. in a time effective way. Yes. Something that I wanted to highlight when you were talking about just really giving a thorough answer to people in their questions is yeah. that that is really a quality of love to to not just answer people with a one-liner or to give them a brief thing and assume they're going to understand yes. everything that we say. And, and I know a lot of people, sometimes they feel really overwhelmed with the amount of words we use to respond to a single question. But both you and I feel that it's, it's quite unloving to assume that people are going to understand everything that we're trying to say um, without us spelling it out properly. Yes, and that's with us talking. Yes. So imagine if you're writing it, it introduces even more complexities because most people misunderstand what's written to them. Yeah. They can't feel the person, the emotional condition of the person who's sending them the information. Yeah. And so for a, lot, for a lot of them, they've got no idea that we actually have a kind feeling coming out of them or a loving feeling coming out of us and towards them when we're saying something that's quite confronting to them. But yes. And so when we type that up, it, the way people read it is totally based upon their filters. Yeah. And so when you're typing a response, not only do you've got to type around their <laughs> filters of what you can hear their feel from them their filters are, but also there's a higher likelihood with type text that the, that the whole thing will be completely misinterpreted yeah. and misinterpreted through their emotional filters, their childhood injuries and so forth. A lot of people just feel even just someone being direct and very clear is someone telling them off as being, you know, as an affront. Yes. And often, imagine if we had to pander around all of the being direct and say it in a roundabout way, it would take 17 times the amount of exactly. time. And, and then also if we had to feed all their addiction to feel yes. nice at, during the whole process <laughs> yeah. and make them feel like everything's nice and warm and fuzzy and all those kind of things, you know, then it's, then it's 30 pages, uh, you know what I mean, of yeah. text. And, and, and obviously, when it comes to writing that amount of text, we would rather write a book or, yeah. or write, you know, something that's benefiting thousands of people, not just one person. Yeah. And so it's highly unlikely for the majority of people that they'll ever receive an email response from us. Yeah. And oftentimes we have a priority list of who we're going to send emails yeah. to. Um, and as you know, I've got three or four hundred emails sitting in my account at any one time that I've never responded to because because uh, I just don't get the time to respond to them. Yeah, and we'll talk in another section about just exactly how we prioritise the specific issue of emails, hey? For sure. 
but something we wanted to highlight before we talk about just how we prioritize all of our time is just to point out to people that we do only have 24 hours a day seven days a week just like them so (laughs) there's no special dimension we can enter that will give us more time to to be able to give more attention to particularly in the physical yes that obviously there's a lot of things we do in spiritual realms as well and and you know we'll go through some of these things but um, in the physical realm, we have the same amount of time that everybody else has, yeah. and uh, and therefore we've got to make sure we use that time wisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that a lot of that brings the question of how we use our time. Yeah, doesn't it? let's get down to that. Yeah. So let's talk about what our number one priority in life is, the, yeah. and which is the thing that we we use this hierarchy of priorities mm-hmm. to decide how we're going to use our time. Yes, and perhaps that we need to state that first is that. We have a priority system in, built in both of us yeah. that is very, uh, very. It's, it's quite strict in the sense that we we feel certain things have far higher priority to us than other things, and as a result of that, we always focus on those. If we've given the opportunity to focus yeah. on two different things, whatever is in our higher in our priority list is usually the thing we will do. And just to point out before we begin we do it for a reason because we understand that if we focus on our number one priority it has a flow-on effect of benefiting all of the lower priorities as well of course always always so our number one priority is our relationship with god yes so each of us these of us do that don't we we spend a lot of time by ourselves um making sure that we're working through our relationship issues with god giving ourselves time to pray and we've done that all of our life because the reason why, obviously, is that the more we can develop our relationship with God, the more truth we can share with other people. Yeah. If we have a, if we um, do not develop our relationship with God, or we don't focus our time and priority on that, on the development of that relationship, then obviously what it means is that that we ha- do not then have the ability to share what we have learned with other people. Yeah, and that's what we're passionate about. We're passionate about yeah. having this personal relationship with God and and the ability to share the benefits of that yeah. with other people. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not only for that reason. Our relationship with God is our first priority for our own selves as well. We, yeah. we realise that our own happiness is very dependent upon our developing relationship with God. And as a result of that, we focus very, very intensely, firstly, on the relationship with God, because because we know that even ourselves being drawn together is dependent upon our relationship with God. Yes. And we've learnt that over many thousands of years. So so that's why it's a big priority for us and that's where we spend the majority of our time. So in the course of an average week, you know, we would spend a good a good third to a half of the entire week just on our relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. And of course that comes into all of the other things that we're going to talk about lower on the list as yes. well, but but just the focus on that, the personal fulfilment of having a relationship with God. Yes. And um, that's our number one thing. Yes. Yeah. And if you examine in terms of time, uh, a good four days out of seven on the average, we focus on our relationship with God. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So our second priority, which ties closely with the first one, is so. a focus on our personal progression. Yes, so and by a, personal, we're talking about both of us together, not both of us apart. Yes, 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 yes. So we're focused on each of us progressing in love, spiritually towards God. Yes. So we, we focus a lot of our time and attention and aspiration on um, receiving truth, Yes. Uh, accepting God's truth into our soul yeah. um, and working on issues that surround love and the receipt of love, the giving of love and... But, but more with each other and, and with and ourselves. With, yes, like, so, towards ourselves. So, so this is where... And, and this is very much incorporated in the first section in a lot of ways. Like, exactly. So the time that we spend in the first section, we usually always spend, spend that, amount, that same time in a mixture of those two things generally, yeah. our relationship with God and our learning about ourselves, learning about the human soul, learning about how we can get closer together, yeah. learning about each other and all of those kind of things. Yeah, so why don't I mention the third one here because it's, 
we're in the same area, yeah. which is yeah. our personal relationship progression. With each other. With each other. So, yeah. so firstly, we're talking about relating with God. Yes. Then we're talking about developing ourselves in truth and love. And, and really, we are one soul anyway. And Correct. so it's about re-establishing that connection and relationship and relationship consciously and wonderfully and all yeah. of those things yeah. yeah so so you could basically say that, that both of us are focused on our relationship with god and then both of us are focused on our our relation when we use the term our yeah. we're not talking about mary or a or jesus relationship <laughs> we're talking about our combined souls relationship yeah so so because our soul is one soul we're talking about one soul's relationship with God and one soul's learning of itself. Yes. And so we see even the joining of the two halves of the soul as the one soul learning about itself yeah. rather than two separate souls learning how to join with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and I suppose we've spoken about the soulmate relationship in other videos and, and other areas, um, written things as well. But but basically the understanding that fear and error and lack of truth are the things that are keeping us apart mm -hmm. um, and keeping us away from understanding this relationship as one soul and, yes. and enjoying that experience. Yes. Yeah. So we spend a lot of our time dealing with any addictions we will have, dealing with any areas where we haven't forgiven or repented for the things that we've done, yeah. where we also look through issues of regarding um, you know, what is our facade self and what is our real self, all the things that we taught in the assistance group as a general introduction yep. are the things we do on a daily basis, every single day of the week pretty much. But on certain days of the week, we spend even more time at it than others. And there's at least three or four days a week where we're focusing our time on that, on, on those, the relationship we've got and the relationship with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could say that really that's our focus all the time, but four days a week, we pretty much say, this is what we're about for yeah. these four days. We're, yeah. Our whole attention is going towards these three priorities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that now gives us very little time left <laughs> <laughs> for the other things. Well, I would say it makes us far more effective in the other three days. <coughs> in, Certainly. In, towards meeting these other priorities that we're going to talk about Certainly. now. I, I feel that it means the quality of what we do in those three days is... If I think about if I spent seven days on the remaining priorities that we're about to talk about and I neglected the first three, well, forget about it. Well, we wouldn't even have progressed at all over 2,000 years. We'd, so we wouldn't have anything that. to say. We'd have a studio with all <laughs> well, these we lights. And we probably we, wouldn't, well, have, we a wouldn't have a studio. We'd probably have five kids and, and, and a whole heap of other pursuits and yep. a mortgage and, yep. and three cars and yep. whatever, yep. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of focusing our attention on, on God and ourselves in terms of progressing first. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so let's talk about priority number four. It's a bit of a nightmare to think about that. Isn't it? <laughs> What's that, priority number four? Or oh, the no, sorry, <laughs> about the, what our life would be like if we didn't have those priorities. Yeah, I can't imagine it. Um, you know, I've done it ever since I was a child in the first century, so I, I can't imagine what... I, I find it hard to even watch other people's lives at times mm. because I find it hard to imagine what they get out of their life when they're not focused on their relationship with God first. Yeah. So for me, it's quite like, while I understand what the reasons why they do all of that is, I don't really understand their life, given the fact now that I understand how important this development of your relationship with God is. Um, basically, that's the key thing for me. And so, mm. and, I, and I can't imagine living life any differently. Yeah, I suppose I have experience with that. I have 30 years in, in this, current incarnation uh, as well as experience in the first century where it wasn't my focus and mm. I the best way I can think to describe it is always coming up against a limitation that I, you know mm. even in my desires and a lot of fear governed my life there was a lot of unhappiness there was a lot of dissatisfaction internally with myself mm. and every way I wanted to turn or to do something I'd always run into like this sense of a limitation or that I couldn't go further or that and mm. it was it was very unhappy mm. so yeah and I love the whole thing with progress we've got everything changes all the time yeah. it's you're learning new things everything's life's changing all the time oh, I love change yeah whereas I see a lot of people are very stuck and don't like change at all and and I feel that's one of the reasons why is because 
they don't yet feel the advantage of having a relationship with God because if they did, they would never want that relationship to be stagnant and they'd always want it to continue growing yeah. and they'd have a lot of focus on that relationship first. Yes. Yeah. And I think though when you're starting out, like I used to say I loved change, but really what I loved was just a change of environment or a change of track because it helped me <laughs> meet some more addictions or distract myself from yeah. how limited I felt. No, I'm talking more about personal change, emotional change, state state of being, your own personal state of being. And that's what I, yeah, I mm. realised that, that then around my 30th year, I found you again and divine truths became a part of my life again and initially I found the the looking at myself quite confronting and the changes quite I was quite resistive to true changes but getting through that yes, initial yeah. point so I, I don't even feel I've, you were quite resistive I feel do you not no because see I I know you say that all the yeah. time but but the feeling I get is that you like you couldn't help yourself. No, that's true. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. like the average person... I pulled my, my huge desire just pulled me through a lot of yeah. stuff. You know, the, the average person would have come up with the confrontations you had and gone, no, I'm out of here, right, within five <laughs> minutes. And, and you go, you want to go out, yeah, but, but you, you, want, you, know, you want to get away. But, but the, the desire for the relationship with God and desire yeah. for truth pulls you back in. And, and this is something that I noticed a lot of people don't have, this the pull back into having the relationship with God driving everything they finish up doing. Yeah. And I feel, you no, know, that's very true. I feel one of the things that we've learned over many th hundreds of years, you know, thousands mm. of years is, is to actually place the relationship with God first, because everything else will be added to you if you have that relationship. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I said those words in the first century, that everything else would be added to you if you focus first on God's love. And uh, well, and it's been translated in the Bible as God's kingdom, yeah. which I suppose is God's love anyway. Yeah. But um, you know what I see is that people need to do that if they ever really going to enjoy the fruitage of continuous growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, and it's probably the thing that I was searching for for those 30 years without yeah. understanding. So as soon as it like puts it into place, you. I was like, I And can't. sure, there was all these addictions and other things <laughs> hitting, being triggered, but, but at the end of the day... No, I couldn't let it go. Couldn't let it go. No, that's very true. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. All right, priority number four. Yep. Which is about planning the future of divine truth. Universally. Yes. So, yeah, so we're now not talking just on earth. We're talking one of our tasks, I suppose, or jobs that in the end God finished up designing to us because of our desire for God was that we would be responsible for universal issues regarding the earth, the spirit world, the first six spheres of the spirit world and helping people in the celestial spheres get to the condition of, um, of unification with each other, the yeah. soul union condition. And uh, you know we've spent we spend a lot of our time, all of our sleep time, a lot of our sleep time yes. is spent in that in that uh, process pursuit, and, and yes. pursuit and also most of our awake time is spent in that as well so we're not just interested in helping people on earth but rather we're interested in helping people everywhere which includes by far the majority of people who lives in the spirit world in comparison to the mm -hmm. the, the seven billion that are on earth yeah. and so we spend a lot of our time trying to help those people too um, yeah and and specifically planning how it is um, divine truth, or let's call it God's truth, mm. can come to be known by those people who aren't already who don't already in know connection with God. Yeah. yeah, and you know that involves uh, organising millions of celestial spirits um, in different tasks that they want to be involved mm. in, as well as um, you know getting things started to get organised here on Earth. So, <laughs> and so, uh, I was yeah. just grinning because I was thinking about organising a bunch of celestial spirits is, is like. It's such a well. That's a breeze. Pleasant. <laughs> it's like hardly what you wouldn't call it organising here. On yeah, no, it's a, it's a fun job, but but it does require organisation and planning. Still, yeah. you know, we have a whole heap of things that are organised in the spirit world that that are under our final control, and that allow us to help people in the spirit world. And so, you know, obviously, we have to maintain those things and look after those things. So that because that's a high priority in our lives. Yeah. And also we know that if we help people in the spirit world, we'll also, because of the amount of spirit influence here on earth, yeah. we'll eventually help people here on earth as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So priority four is about the overall global planning of that process. Yeah, you wouldn't call it global planning, you'd probably call it universal. Oh, yes, universal sorry. Planning. Global, universal. Yeah. 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 Okay, and our fifth is about the progression of divine truth or the progression of the knowledge and the gaining of God's truth. Yes, so obviously everything we personally learn uh, through our own progress from focusing on our priorities number one and two yep. um, and three and three, and three yeah. um, has to be somehow transferred to people who want to know that information. And so that requires the transference of information from ourselves to other people, yeah. whether they be other people who are spirits or other people here on earth. And if we talk about it just in earth terms at the moment, um, that's things like how we're going to distribute all of the material that we've already created, yes. written things, seminars, yeah. how the website's going to run, those, no. I'm skipping ahead a little. Yeah, because that's yeah. way down. That's way down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's, it's more about um, yeah, you... it's more about the the distribution of information universally. So not yes. just here on Earth, but yes. universally. So yes. so what we've found what we've found in our life is that if we distribute information to other celestial spirits who want to know the information, they now we have millions and millions of people who are able to distribute the same information as far as they understand it to other people who are not in that condition. And so what that does is, it, you, I suppose the, you could call it in a business sense, uh, the leverage of other people's time, but <laughs> yeah. that's not how it feels to us. We're not leveraging other people's time. We're, we're transferring information that we've learnt to other people so that they can transfer the same information to many many millions of other people. So what we find is we transfer our information generally in the spirit world to uh, groups of up to 100 to 200 people generally, and they're organised to then transfer that information to groups of thousands of people at a time, yeah. and so forth and so forth until e every person in the spirit world is covered in, or, or looked after in some way. Yeah. And, and it's the same kind of process we would like to do here on Earth. Um, yeah. We would like to have a group of people around us who understand uh, divine truth and who understand it emotionally, understand it at the soul level, who we can then help, who, who then can help to transfer that information to other people and so forth. And so eventually uh, the divine truth will become known by every person on earth, whether they want to choose to follow it or not, it's immaterial. Yes. It, it will be known by them, which is really all we want to yeah. achieve. Yeah, our biggest desire, isn't it, is just to give every single person the opportunity Yes to know Tonight. this wonderful truth yeah. and they can accept it or deny it, we're not invested. Correct. Just that they have that opportunity in front of them yes. at some but, point. But one thing that will help them greatly is our own progression. Yes. And if our own progression on earth can be, can be shown or demonstrated practically, then of course that is going to make it very, very easy for other people to go, well, that's the kind of life I would like to, or that's the yeah. kind of things that I would like to be able to do too. And yeah. that will generate their desire and faith to actually develop their relationship with God and relationship with their other half, just like we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, priority number four is universal planning yes. of the future of divine truth. Yes. Uh, five is progression of this divine truth or yes. God's truth so in the spirit So I world. suppose you could say one is the planning phase yes. and the other one is the doing phase. And um, well, and let me move on to six, which is the teaching phase, yes. which you started to speak which about. Which is a part of the doing phase. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So how do we go about sharing information that is soul-based information and, and it requires emotional openness to learn? How can we go about sharing information in an emotional way yeah. with people and help them cre and create an openness universally. It's yes. not just, fo again, focused on Earth. It's all the way through the spirit realm and on Earth. How do we help people get to this phase where they're no longer intellectually dominant and, and their soul now is desiring a, a connection with God? Yeah. And how can we help them achieve that state so that they too can go through the same transformational experience? Yes. And one of the particularly beautiful things about um, life on the earth plane and one of the, a big reason that we decided to come back here is that the earth is so readily accessed and viewed by people in all of the spirit realms yeah. and so 
us having this emotional engagement with God's truth again and anyone around us who does that, who moves from intellectual dominance into this soul-based living, that does an enormous amount to help the universal progression of understanding of God's truth. Very much so. And, yeah. um, and so, so, for example, if the average person connects emotionally on earth, there's spirits around them who are, who are either who are what you'd classify as natural love spirits who have yet to learn emotional connection. Yep. They're learning from their experience. And then you've also got spirits around them who are in the hells who, who see them become brighter and their condition change. And so they're learning from those things. And then you've got, of course, spirits who oppose that even, but even their opposition of it is felt. Yes. And so, you know, there's a lot of people who learn from the one person going through an emotional experience. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. beautiful yeah. system. Okay, so that's we've got our first six priorities there. Yep, haven't even hardly touched the earth at this point. <laughs> There's no emails yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, no. <laughs> All well, right. Although they might be involved in some teaching. Yeah, aspects. look, and I have to say, sometimes it is I am engaging um, it, with aspects of my personality or desire or even my progression when I write an email to mm. someone. So some people out there are going to be watching and going, Hang on, Mary, you wrote me an email, yeah. and how did that fit in? And that's because either I felt very drawn in a, in a loving desire towards that person, and I felt it was a part of just expressing my nature, which I haven't done very much, mm -hmm. and so um, I've written an email. Or, or it could have been that, uh, like in many cases, it's because of our personal learning, we have to engage that particular yes, person it's an to work through a specific emotion that we haven't addressed that the attraction with that particular person has identified. Exactly. Which is all about priority number two. Yes. yes. <laughs> or three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So our seventh priority, yep. um, which is very near to my heart, is helping people who are oppressed and suffering. Yes. And that's people in the spirit world and people on earth. And both of us have a strong feeling for people anywhere who are feeling oppressed or suffering mm. because of unloving treatment from other people, mm -hmm. other spirits. And um, that's a really high priority for us to, well, seven, but obviously yes. um, a part of what we do in the first six is, is towards easing that suffering. But our specific it's... attention on those issues um, comes high in our priority list. Yes. Yeah. And that, that includes things like, you know, when we notice a person being abused by another, um, obviously we'll try to help the person who yeah. is the, not the abuse uh. Uh, <laughs> but rather the abuse e yeah. to actually work through their issues about why they've attracted the abuse, how that, you know, what, what soul condition has caused that to occur, how they can work their way through the issue. It's a lot easier, we've also found, to help a person who's being abused yes. than, it is, than it is to help a person who's actually the abuser. Yeah. The abuser generally has a lot more darker emotions to work their way through. And as a result, their desire, they have usually less desire to love than yeah. the person who's being abused. Yeah. And as a result of that, it, it, usually we spend more time with people who have been harmed than the people who do the harming. Yeah, it's kind of a sad fact, isn't it, that often the person who's doing the harming doesn't even take pause until the person that they're harming makes a shift of some kind. Correct. Because um, there's an addictive relationship between the yeah. two where the person who's doing the harming likes the feeling they get from the person they're harming. Yeah. And, and once you remove the person who's being harmed emotionally from that situation, and I'm not saying you physically remove them, but emotionally the person they makes change changes. in their emotional reaction Then to the it, person yeah. who's doing the harming doesn't get the same satisfaction yeah. from harming that person anymore. Yeah. And so then there's a higher likelihood of the person who's doing the harming will actually start to reflect upon their own behaviour. Yeah. And if people reflect about how we've dealt with different issues between even in families and, Couples, and partner relationships, yeah. Yeah. we've focused very much on the person who's getting harmed yeah. saying no anymore to yeah. the harm yes and and once the person the person does that then the person who's been doing the harming yeah. now no longer gets satisfaction from the harm they created yeah. and so now usually they enter a state where they go well yeah there's something wrong with me here too so yeah. then they go through their process and so that's why we generally do it in that order yeah. yeah. And of course, there are people who are suffering because they have done harm to others, because that's a natural result through the law of compensation. Of course. And we do have compassion for those people, most certainly. Yes. But we 
we feel less drawn to them or they don't really fall into this priority if they still want to retain those choices to harm other people. Correct. As soon as a person says, look, I'm suffering, I want to change the choices that I've made or deal with why I've done this harm, mm -hmm. then we are full of compassion and really want to help them. Yeah. But if someone's suffering and basically they're just saying, yeah, but there's no problem with me, it's everyone else's fault that I'm suffering, yeah. then it's We're very, not very attracted. We're yeah. not attracted, no. yeah. Sure, we want to offer them truth. Yeah, but even then they, but they're not in the uh, state where they hear it. Exactly. And in fact, usually all they do is get angry and abusive. Um, and that's why in those cases we might share a truth more generally, globally, that's what I mean mm. about offering the truth in a more general sense about these are the facts about this and it's on a video, but we wouldn't go and search that person out or not even necessarily respond to them. Not if, generally. If they're... Well, they're not ready to hear truth exactly. and a person needs to desire truth before they'll hear it. Yeah. And, and that's the case whether you're right sitting with them or whether they're the opposite side of the world. If they desire truth sincerely, they will eventually hear it and see it. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's one of the beautiful things about God's laws, isn't it? Of course, yeah. 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 Okay. Priority number eight. Yep, I can't remember priority number eight. <laughs> it did come to you pretty easy if you thought about it, but yeah, I, won't, I won't make you once, do that. Why don't you say it? I'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> That's about helping sincere groups yes. to progress. And in, this is about groups of people rather than individuals. Yeah. You know, obviously, um, you know, we want to help individuals, but obviously if there's a thousand people with exactly the same problem, it is much more time effective for us to help yeah. a thousand people with that problem yeah. than it is to go and talk to each one of those thousand people individually. Yeah. So, so obviously we always will have a group priority over an individual priority. And if you think about even the assistance groups that we just did in 2014, um, there we had a group of people come together. If people show themselves to be not sincere, we ask them to leave mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that would make room for the learning and growth of the sincere people involved. Correct. And then we were able to present a lot of truths and lessons to this group of sincere people and each of them had the opportunity to interact and ask questions. But if we'd done that one-on-one -on -one with each one, we'd still be going now. <laughs> Um, in late well, 2015, you know, yeah. um, and still not be finished. And yes. so it makes more logical sense to help spirits in groups or people in on yes. earth in groups. In the spirit world, it's a lot easier than here. Yeah. So we often help much larger groups in the spirit world than here. On earth, groups of people generally don't want to listen to you until everybody, it's fashionable to listen to you. <laughs> and at the moment, it's not very fashionable to listen to us. <laughs> so as a result, there's not a lot of group, large groups of people who want to listen. But in the spirit world, it is quite fashionable to listen to, to Mary and Jesus. <laughs> so we get to spend time with millions of people at a time, oftentimes, yeah. and, uh, and therefore get the ability to help large numbers of people through what we talk about. And, and what we, we share with them. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I suppose the key um, thing to highlight in this priority is that we're talking about sincere people. Mm. We're talk it's not just a group of people who've gotten together because they're sort of not quite convinced about divine truth, but maybe they yeah. want to hear. Well, normally, you know, we have helped those in the past, we particularly have. early days. Yes. Like. <laughs> Um, but, but the reality is there's a lot of other spirit helpers that we have that do those kind of events in the spirit world nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And we generally um, are helping the people who are helping the other people in yeah. the spirit world generally. Yeah, yeah and I mm. should say as well that a person can be sincere and not have made up their mind about divine truth. Mm. Um, I just mean people who are tossing up between the footy game and maybe listening. Yeah, to those without a sincere desire to have truth in their lives. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, most of the people we associate with in the spirit world only have that. They have that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the people we associate with here on earth don't have that yet. No. And so um, we do find at times it's difficult here on earth still because there's very few people who really have a very strong desire to hear truth in their lives. If you compare how many people are actually even listening to us, and I'm saying hearing us, not really <laughs> listening, <laughs> um, there's only a few thousand that are listening to us. Yeah. If you actually talk about the ones that are that are actually letting it sink into their heart, there's yeah. probably less than 100 or so at this stage. Yeah. 
who are letting it really sink into their heart. You know, and the, yearning for and that And then there's, truth. A, yeah. there's a range of people in between who are selective. You know, yeah. they'll listen to that thing, but not that thing. And, yeah. You know, yeah. and obviously the people who are not selective and who want God's truth right across the board, even when it's challenging, are the people on earth who we are, you know, the most interested in helping. Yeah, yeah. that's a, a deep pleasure, isn't it, to spend mm. time with those sort of people who... For a lot of reasons. One primary reason is because it meets the other higher priorities. And if we can help an individual who has a sincere desire in their heart to grow towards God, and we can help them grow, make growth, then that person has the capacity to help hundreds of other people. Yeah. And so this then allows for the growth of divine truth on earth. If a person just comes along and listens, comes along and listens, comes along, but doesn't actually learn anything or do anything or make any personal changes, then that person really they're drawing a lot of time from us, but but without any larger results. Yeah. And while they may, they may eventually get there, yeah. we need, at this stage, because it's early days yet here on Earth, we need to get a group of people together who actually are very sincere, have strong desire for their relationship with God, strong desire to know truth, a strong desire to live in harmony with God's laws and live morally and ethically. And those kind of people... Um, once we find them, we do spend a lot of time with them, not only just for them, but also with the knowledge that those kind of people have a large amount of uh, potential of helping other people in the future. Yeah, it's not about helping us. It's about their, their capacity to assist others. Yes. And if we can assist them with the growth that we've made thus far in yes. those three first three priorities, assist them to make the progress in their relationship with God, with themselves, with their soul as a complete unit, yeah. then then it just has a flow-on effect for other souls. Exactly. Um, it's not really helping uh, us except in our desire, which yeah, is well, if, to... Well, if, if we were selfish, we'd probably spend all of our time on the first three priorities <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and no time on any other priority. <laughs> so, but it's there, a bit hard. It doesn't really meet But, but you, can't, you can't be at one with God and be selfish. No. Uh, and you can't, and, and you do have a lot of compassion and, and feeling for other people. And so this is why we prioritise our life in the way we have. Yeah. And that's also why we spend a lot of time with people assisting certain people. Yeah. But, but we are more focused on people who are less resistive. Yeah. than on people who are more resistive, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And part of that is just respecting the their will, you know. Correct. If a person's resistive, their will is not engaged. And so Well their will is on... actually engaged negatively. Exactly. They, they're engaging their will to resist. <laughs> so sometimes I feel like it's almost like a scientific equation. You can't you can't help truth to enter if there's a big gate on it. No. So why would you keep trying? It's against the laws of science almost. Well, it's also it's, it's exhausting. It's exhausting for, for the person. The person who's, who's re trying to... receiving as well as the person who's giving. Yeah, that's right. And the person who's receiving doesn't want to hear the information. So what's the point in telling them? Like the only time we would enter into a, you know, some kind of a thing where we do talk to somebody when they don't really want to hear it <laughs> is because they've forced us into the forced themselves into our lives in some way yeah or uh, i feel about the issue of oppressed and suffering people you know if i'm in a situation even then i don't generally don't, engage them yeah um, i know you do still but um i generally don't it's a bit of my because i just feel they're still not ready they're still not they, they still, a lot of people who are suffering, you can say people who are suffering fall into a couple of different categories. There's a group of people who are suffering, who are suffering because of their own choices. Yeah. And then there's the group of people who are suffering because of the choices of others. Yeah. Now, I have a much higher desire to help the people who are suffering from the choices of others rather than their own choices, because their own choices are actively engaged by their own will. I suppose that's, uh, and perhaps, we can talk about that, but I suppose that's when I feel more um, desire to speak up. If I'm witness to a situation where someone is oppressing, attacking or abusing another, um, and it's quite clear the issue of love and truth there, mm. often I want to speak up mm -hmm. um, for the truth in the situation mm -hmm. um, because I feel in a way that... <laughs> that's a part of living morally. Do you disagree? Or are you talking about something different there? Yeah, like I do agree, but yeah. I think we're getting a bit off track yeah, sorry. here. But, yeah. uh, but the reality is we would like to obviously help all people, Yes. but it's, but it's less possible to help people 
who are actively resisting any help that they're being given. Yes. It's like a person who's incapacitated mm. arguing with you while you're trying to help them. Yeah. yeah. My feeling is don't help them. Yeah. <laughs> because, and, because at the end of the day, they, they need to feel the full consequence of their incapacitation rather than, rather than have somebody helping them. And they just complain at that person all the time. It's exhausting yeah. for the person who's helping. Yeah. And, and I would like to help people. Obviously, people... Like I said, there are two groups of people. There's a group of people who are suffering because of the choices of others. Mm. And then, you know, then there's a group of people who are suffering because of their own choices. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in the Western world are suffering because of their own choices. Mm. And so, you know, when it comes to helping suffering people, um, obviously we're interested in the people who realise that they're suffering because of their own choices and they want to change that. Yeah. You know, so it requires people to go through certain awarenesses before you can help them yeah and the reality is we don't want to spend our time forcing awareness on people no they need to develop yes. their own awareness yes and look we don't need to go down this rabbit hole any further no i'm sorry for digressing <laughs> us a little okay so priority eight is helping sincere groups to progress and this and the focus here is groups groups we, we will always put a higher priority on groups than individuals yes for this reason and we've touched on nine which is helping sincere individuals, individuals. to progress yes. And, and we will help sincere individuals to progress frequently, but oftentimes at this stage, it's because we feel in the later time they will actually finish up helping other people to progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the more responsive a person is, the higher their priority is for us. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if a person looks at that list, they can see that there's a lot of things not on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, well, I just all. mentioned 10, oh, yeah. which is um, our <laughs> personal interests related to why we're here. So yes. that yeah, falls course, way yeah. down the list of 10. Yeah, but, um, but, but that is important in terms of like, there's a lot of personal things that we want to learn and there's a lot of personal things we would like to do. Yeah. And, and these are not generally physical things that the average person does. You know, it's not like we're very interested in traveling or yeah. any of those kind of things. Uh, we're interested, we, we have a lot more sincere and deeper desires than that um, that are more focused around personal our personal growth yeah. and so you know we focus on those when we've got time from those <laughs> other things <laughs> which are, as you know yeah. is not, not so is that frequently yeah. you know, like I go outside and jump and do somersaults on my trampoline but yeah. Yeah. it's not a you know, it's not something I spend, you know, all Hours my time to learning it, yeah. to do. It's yeah. not like I'm jumping for the Olympics or something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you could jump for the Olympics. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the things that are not on our priority yeah, list. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. So basically, um, people who are in addiction, who are demanding, who are... Um, trying to monopolize our time who want to, us to convince them of the value of, of truth. divine truth yeah. or all of these kinds of people don't even fall on the priority list no so a person might send us an email with a whole heap of bible verses saying they want a response on all of those kind of things and and why would we respond like they're already done they're, they're not even desiring any yeah. information yeah. generally and even if they are, they're so fully entrenched on the Bible being God's word that they can't hear anything we're saying. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, you know, unless there is a greater good in assisting that one person, mm -hmm. we don't have the time to assist them. Uh, they need to become far more open to truth before we can assist them. Yes. Yeah. And the sincere person in that category, you know, who comes from a Christian background, there's a wealth of information that we've already presented in FAQs that Correct. they can view, you know, and, and our beautiful volunteers who man the FAQ and office accounts Yes. Dire often direct those people to those yes. um, videos, but because uh, many of those people are completely insincere and attacking, mm -hmm. they just want they, to attack us some more. Yeah, so. and they're not going to get on our list to respond. No. You know, a person can attack us till they're blue in the face, but at the end of the day, they're not going to get a response. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're not like the average people who attack back because they're being attacked. That's you know, right. So, so at the end of the day, yep. we're not going to attack back but we're also not going to respond there's no need to respond in fact if anything we might block, block their email address or whatever exactly you know, yeah. so that we don't have to even put up with deleting their email yeah mm. yeah so basically we don't nowhere in our priority system falls anyone who's attacking abusive who want to treat us badly even or treat people, others badly yeah yeah if we observe them treating others exactly. badly and we've talked to them about it already and they still want to do it 
there's no point in talking to them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's quite a number of people who think they're sincere who continue to treat others badly and we have very little to do with them now because they still haven't learnt to stop treating others badly. Yeah. Um, and There's and little we can do. We've already said what we needed to say to them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned in our introduction to this session, as we develop in love, we do get more selective and reflective about who we decide we're going to spend our time with because... Um, yeah. Even the, the laws of attraction are operating. And if, mm. if someone doesn't have a desire to take personal responsibility for themselves and their life, even someone who doesn't is not really interested in a relationship with God and just want a relationship with us, they don't really fall on our priority list. And no. that's not because we necessarily um, judge them or think ill of them. It's just because there's not... Well, there's a lot of reasons that they can't understand us for a start yes. and, and we don't understand their priority. We, we understand why they choose it, but we don't understand why they want to choose yes. it in yes. the sense yes. of like, so they, they also have, because most people in that category have no soul progression, they're not emotional beings. So they don't get what we do most of the time and they're yeah. totally confused most of the time and usually argumentative. Yeah. And so, you know, there's no point in having a relationship with those people. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so there's a whole heap of reasons why we wouldn't have a relationship with those people, but even there's a whole heap of reasons why we wouldn't even probably interact with those people by choice. Yeah. Um, we might do it in a seminar situation or something yeah. like that, yeah. but we certainly wouldn't do it, you know, we wouldn't go out of a way to visit them at their home or something yeah. when yeah. they've already displaying how much resistance they have and, and what can we do to talk about the weather. We don't, we're not into talking about the weather or many other physical things, <laughs> as yeah. most people who spend a lot of time with us realise. Realise. Mm. And, um, yeah, I feel we're quite passionate and motivated in this area of our priorities. And mm. so it seems like poor time management to it suddenly is. introduce other... Uh, other pursuits, even things like just travel for the sake of sightseeing. And, yeah, or, or uh, go down the beach every day for the sake of surfing. Or yeah. Like, yeah. like I like surfing. You love surfing. But, yeah. but the reality is I don't, I, you know, the last time I surfed, I, probably two years ago, yeah. you know what I mean? Like because it's not high on my priority yeah. list. We like doing it to relax or yeah. like if we need relaxation, if we need to have time away from people, we will do it then, but yeah. but we're not addicted to those pursuits. We're not addicted to pursuits that are selfish in order to get some kind of feeling. So, yes. so, so we're not doing those things because we want something out yeah. of it. Yeah. We're doing them because we want some relaxation perhaps, but that's all. Yeah. So yeah, there's no reason why we'd spend time, and even time with people who just want their addictions met. There's plenty yeah. of time, people around us who, who they only want to come and visit me because they feel nice when they do. Yeah. And, when they go away, their life doesn't change, nothing happens to their life, they don't work through anything that we've talked about. And those kind of people honestly don't attract me very much. They, they, they are in fact like a, a, an occasional leech in a way. Where they I was just, just about to make the sucking noise. <laughs> <laughs> they're sort of taking from, from us without any desire to change or change their life. They, and a lot of them don't even know why they want to visit us, to be no, honest. They just they want to have a nice feeling. They haven't reflected about that. And there are people who want things from, from us, like to feed, we mentioned addictions globally, but, you know, things like to feed someone's vanity or yeah. to feed their feeling that they are getting somewhere or to help them just feel better about themselves for, for this period of time or or to, for us to cheer them up or to give them faith or to give them hope and all of those things. And, and mm. obviously, while we're open to um, doing that in a pure way, if mm. someone's doing that in an addictive kind of... In a, in um, a way, to, in a desire to avoid their own progress, exactly. then we won't help them. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, we, we want to help people have faith and hope and to feel good about themselves, but... But only if they're doing it to progress, not yeah. to avoid their progress. Exactly. There's a lot of people who want you to tell them that they can have faith in God, but they have none themselves and they have no, uh, they have no desire to get some. Yeah. They just want you to tell them that they should have some. Yeah. And we're not interested in that kind of interaction. We want to interact with people who truly desire faith in God in their heart and work their way through any issues of why they don't have faith. You know, they sincerely desire that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of people that we, we generally don't seek out as a result of these particular things. 
Yes. Mm. And I suppose the, the last um, group of people that we haven't really mentioned that don't fall on our priority list are members of the media who are just interested in furthering their career through their association with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like there's a lot of people in the media who have this belief that um, we must be desperate for attention because I'm saying I'm Jesus, you know. Yeah. And in particular, it's usually focused at me because yeah. of that. And, and they don't realise that I'm not des you know, they have no idea or understanding of me as a person. They don't realise that I'm not desperate for attention at all. Mm -hmm. and, and so when they approach us to have some kind of media interaction, they're confused about my lack of interest. Mm. And my lack of interest is driven totally by the fact that I don't feel, in many of them, any pure desire on their part to share truth with the world, to learn any personal truth themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time they have, a, they have a career to further, a job to do or whatever. And as a result of that, you know, there's very little desire on my part to engage them. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we, we're spending less and less time engaging people like that. If there was a media person who wanted to share what we teach, mm. I'd be totally into engaging them. Yeah. Because it, to me, to us, our, our desire is not to talk, share about us, which is all, all most yeah. media want to hear about, yeah. but rather we want to share about the truth we teach. And, and if there was a media person who was interested in having a whole series of presentations or forums or, or, or even interactions with audiences about what we teach, mm. now I'd be interested in that. But I'm not interested in sitting there and getting attacked and I'm not interested in sitting there and being abused, and I'm not interested in sitting there talking about myself yeah. either. <laughs> and and so. just the buzz questions about being Jesus and the witnessing the crucifixion and all those kind of things that are just posed to create drama and sensation. And well, not only that, even if they were sincere, they are just memories of our life, um, which mean very little to us yes. as to us ourselves aside from some residual pain that we might have to to express or deal with mm -hmm. because of the memories but um there's very little other reason for sharing it with anyone aside from what the person might learn from the experience yeah. that's the only reason why we would share it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. awesome so so that brings us to the answer of the first question does it the is that the end of our? <laughs> <I can't laughs> That's the end of our priorities. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, no. That, just... That's certainly the end of our priorities. Yes. And uh, and what we wanted to state there is right. So, so now that you understand our priorities, exactly. so for everybody out there, yeah. now you understand our priorities. Perhaps you already know why we have or have not answered your questions, or why we haven't dealt with you, or why we have dealt with others and not you, or why we deal with you and not others. Yeah. Perhaps a lot of those answers <laughs> are all present for you. <laughs> and yes. if not, we'll help you with the next series of yes. questions that are that coming after question. this. <laughs>